No longer is the Half Dandy the only high impact auto rifle. Now we have the Lockwitter, which New Monarchy sells. It has three scope choices. We have Thermal, we have Post, and we have the Range. Keep in mind that if you use a controller, if you play console, the range scope will make aim assist feel real sticky at farther ranges, and ricochet rounds actually adds a little bit of zoom, which decreases damage drop off. Same for the long scope. As if this wasn't enough, it also has high impact reserves, so as you experience drop off at further ranges, it mitigates it a little bit by increasing the damage of both headshots and body shots. As you can see on screen by the comparison to the half dan, although the half dan does show a little bit more in the range stat, even when you go for the longest range scope on the Lockwitter, it still beats it. The Lockwitter still beats it because of ricochet rounds. This is the same case for the number versus positive outlook versus Uriel's GIF. Because the number has ricochet rounds and a medium zoom scope just like the others, ricochet rounds translates to it having better damage at range. Here's the part where we talk about numbers. This chart right here shows the Lockwitter. The Lockwitter, when you shoot half of the bullets, making the high impact reserve perk proc, and then it also shows it again with two bullets left in the magazine. Keep in mind that as you empty the magazine, high impact reserves does more damage. That's what this part of the chart shows. I also show the number, the number halfway, and the number with two bullets left in the magazine. I shoot Cabal on the Leviathan. I use a Darcy to confirm that it's 50 meters. I shoot him in the body with both auto rifles. And then I throw an empowering rift and do it again so I can tell the difference from the empowering rift. And this is around 30%. Now for the high impact reserves, this is interesting. The Loquitur showed higher changes from high impact reserves, and this will matter later. The number, on the other hand, showed smaller changes, but we can safely assume that in either case, as you get deeper in the mag, it changes from 2.9% to 5.5% as you get deeper in the magazine. So the more bullets you shoot, the more damage high impact reserves do. And I double checked that Empowering Rift does around a 15% improvement to damage on body shots in PvP. Here's something interesting about the high impact reserves. Remember that it does only a 2.9% difference, and when it's doing 21 or 18 damage, that doesn't necessarily translate to a new number. It's still going to show 21, but it's going to show an invisible point something. So it could be a 21.1, it could be a 21.6969. We don't know exactly, but as we do the math, we can help narrow down what the Loquitur can do and what the number can do in the minimum amount of shots with an empowering rift and high impact reserves proccing. And so what this math essentially asks us is can the Loquitur high impact reserve 16 body shot kill, so that means right when it's halfway through the mag, can it kill in 8 body shots? Yes or no? And the answer after crunching the numbers is yes if their HP is below 198.8 which is just shy of 10 resilience. But can the number do the same thing in 9 bullets, which is its fastest headshot TTK? The answer is no, after crunching the numbers. And this chart over here shows the popular three, Uriel's Gift, Cuboid in the Kinetic, and Number in the Energy Slot, meters away post-patch, that's the drop-offs. And then I also have the half dan here. Keep in mind this wasn't changed after the auto rifle nerf. And so where you're going to see these guns excel is around the 39 to 45 meters range right here. After it gets 55 plus, it's going to fall a little bit and you probably don't want to be using an auto rifle at all. Stick to pulse rifles mainly. But this is interesting because this means if you throw an empowering rift up, you should just shoot with the body with the loquitur. Whereas on the number, you can still hit him for the body, but it's probably better to go for the head altogether and skip empowering rift because it doesn't make as much of a difference in the shots to kill. Initially, I thought the best way to run the loquitur, loquitur, whatever you want to call it, was with Actium War Rig. And you may think Actium War Rig is counterproductive to proccing the high impact reserves perk, but it actually is super beneficial. What you wanna do is purposely waste all your auto rifle bullets and then just sit in the last like four to eight to 16 bullets, somewhere in there. And then as Actium War Rig reloads the auto rifle, you're hitting high impact reserves on every shot, not just the bottom half of the magazine. So to rephrase for clarity, as long as you keep your magazine below 16 bullets, the Actium War Rig will automatically reload bullets into your magazine as you're shooting. So that means you could indefinitely proc high impact reserves. Ah. <laughs> but like I brought up at the start of the video, it's best to pair Lockwitter with an empowering rift. Without the rift, it takes a combination of headshots and body shots, 8 bullets to kill a target. But with empowering rift, it just takes 8 body shots. 
So instead of forcing your friends to run in Powering Rift and hate you, you can be a one-man army. By this I mean the obvious downside to running Empowering Rift means that you don't get to run a healing rift. But with the Voidwalker, you can consume your grenade, devour, and restore all of your health, so you don't necessarily need a healing rift. And although Empowering Rift and Healing Rift cooldown times are crazy long, you can mitigate this by using the Stag, which means that when you're critically damaged, and you will be a lot because I run low recovery, your rift energy restores. And I'm serious, when you're critically wounded, half of your rift energy comes back. So what you can do to make this go even faster is if you kill a titan who just threw up a barricade, purposely run through the barricade and regroup with your team. While your health's recovering, the enemy should be respawning and you'll be happy with the new empowering rift. So although I did show numbers at the beginning that proved that the Lockwitter is better than the number when using this ultra uber specific build, I still think the number is better overall. But what if you wanted to use an exotic like let's say the Fighting Lion or Risk Runner or something like that in the energy slot? Well, you can't use the number in another energy exotic at the same time, so the next best choice would be to go the Cuboid or the Lockwitter, because this isn't a battle of the number versus the Lockwitter, this is a battle of the Cuboid versus the Lockwitter, or any other kinetic auto rifle. Even when you consider the 1.1 auto rifle patch to the 450s, I still think the Cuboid is one of the best, if not the best, kinetic auto rifles. And that has to do partially with its archetype and partially with its perks. Moving target is a great perk and is totally the opposite of the Lockwitter, which is intrinsically a high impact frame, which means that it shoots a little bit more accurate when standing still and crouching. But at the higher ends of the PvP spectrum, standing still and crouching gets a killed. You need to be strafing, you need to be popping in and out of cover, you need to be dodging bullets, because the less they hit you, the more health you have to shoot back. But when comparing apples to oranges, the Lockwitter does outrange the Cuboid by a pretty severe amount. So I suppose your decision making would be something like, how long range is the map? Is it Shores of Time, or is it Endless Veil? Vale? If it's a shorter map, you're not going to be experiencing much drop off with the Cuboid. But if it's a longer range map, you might want to opt for a Pulse Rifle. But if you're really stuck on deciding between a Pulse Rifle and an Auto Rifle, you're probably safe to go with the Lockwitter, because it really does fill that middle ground. But if for some reason you want to test out the longest ranges of the Lockwitter, throw on a Kinetic Counterbalance mod or two because you'll need it. At the longest engagements possible, I recommend tap firing the Lockwitter because shooting full auto just will not hit your target, especially with a controller. As you can see in the background gameplay, and I also did a trials card with this, I'm using the Wrist Runner as my energy weapon of choice, and that's because with the Stag and Powering Rift build, you're incentivized to take damage from enemy sources. So that means if you see an Arc Bolt, if you see a Pulse Grenade, if you see a Titan Barricade, whatever, run into it. If you get hit by something Arc, you proc the Risk Runner perk, which means that if you shoot enemies, it chains lightning to them, making it that much easier for your teammates to come in and clean up the kills. But Cammy, Mighty Uriel's OP, you could never do this in a real match. Let me get that power boy up. Sit down. Stand up. Rocket's OP. Let me kill him around cover now. Cross. They're rotating high arches. Oh yeah, and before I let you finish the rest of that clip, let me remind you that this gun has ricochet rounds. I almost forgot to mention it and I'm like face palming right now because I love this perk so much dearly because of this. But ricochet rounds bounce off walls, so that means you can hit people around corners while you're in safety. Trust me, this comes into play way more than you would think. I've used the fighting line for a long time. At this point, I think I have a doctorate in geometry. Killed him with ricochets, there we go. As for closing remarks for this gun, I gotta say it is significantly better than the Half Dan, and it kind of makes the fixed roll system work in a sense because this is the 
only gun that does what it does. It definitely is different from the half dan in that regard, and definitely different from other auto rifles as I showed with the math. While using an empowering rift is definitely funny, the fact that you can body shot TTK the same as someone else headshotting, it's not always practical. So you're not going to see the Lockwitter empowering rift combo used in a tournament or something tomorrow. But the gun itself definitely shows some potential for flanking around 50 meters out, staying out of that hand cannon 4 tap range, while also handling itself adequately if you do happen to end up in a 1v1. But in my experiences, the best teams are the ones that gear up for a 4v4, not a 1v1v1v1v1v1. 1v1, 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 1v1. 1v1. So what I'm alluding to is that I've had more success with a very similar loadout combo. The Einstein D, which is a pulse rifle high impact with high impact reserves and ricochet rounds same as the Lockwitter. I combo Risk Runner with it, and instead of stag, I go Aphidian Aspect so that I can quickly shoot a burst of pulse rifle then switch to Risk Runner for the cleanup, making it so that I'm just as potent in a 1v1 and even more potent when I'm shooting with my team because the Einstein D does more burst damage. It shoots a burst of three high powered bullets if someone happens to peek a corner right at that instant, whereas if I'm using this particular high impact auto rifle, the Lockwitter, I might only get two shots off that do less damage. And you also have to consider that the Einstein D having similar perks can actually deal with scout rifles because it is very very long range. So this means that my final recommendation is, if you hit the majority of your shots, use the Einstein. If you miss every now and then, use the Lockwitter. I hope you enjoyed this review with the Lockwitter. If you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments section below, and also let me know if you enjoyed this video. Thanks guys!